there's this kind of a mantra you know, that takes place by the repetitive movements. Same thing over and over again. And your hands, are basically, it's a dance movement with your hands. You know, and then from there, you know, like an hour, two hours go by and you didn't realize that it happened. Um, you know, that's what I really was like, you know, fell in love with when I first started getting into it. My name is Mark Skidlark, and I'm from the 56340 Holding Forward, Minnesota. I am a professional potter for the last 32 years. I make wood fired functional wear, uh, and uh, function meaning that um, the pots are used specifically for dinner wear, garden wear. Um, People do buy my pots from time to time just purely for decoration, but I really try to encourage that people use my pots and have, you know, a nice relationship with, uh, with the piece. No, um, no I didn't. Uh, I grew up, uh, again, uh, on a farm, uh, not that far from Holding Ford proper. Um, as far as creativity, um, no, it was like, you know, it was a typical working family, um, so we had chores. Uh, we really didn't have time, you know, for uh, that kind of frivolous, you know, uh, you know uh, time that you sort of spend making art and, and playing with paint or clay, that type of a thing. However, I do remember at a very early age, my mother did give me uh, there were these little sticks of clay, oil-based clay, um, and there were different colors. And uh, I remember just trying to make like tractors and machinery and replicating like farm life uh, on the farm. And uh, I would definitely get lost for hours just doing that, this little, you know, card table. Um, so um, that really, I think, is like as far as just the, the aspect of working with your hands, you know, that's what really kind of like, you know, intrigued me more than anything else. So. Yeah, you know, I was just really, really kind of intrigued with the process. You know, I, I think that, you know, it's really, we, we talked a little bit about the whole aspect of, um, of art, and I hate to use art specifically as a therapy, and I probably wasn't necessarily conscientious of it at that point in time, uh, but I had an accident when I was about 10 years old that put me in the hospital for about four months, and then it was just really kind of a long recovery after that. At that point in time, I do remember doing a lot more drawing. Uh, just because I couldn't necessarily work um, and uh, so I'm not really quite sure if that moment in time really sort of thrust me down this path you know of, of making art or being creative uh, but I think it had to have something to do with it um, and you hear that over and over with different artists you know there's typically you know definitely like a, a point in their life there's like you know where the door opens up and all of a sudden they sort of see you know, their, their future in front of them. Um, and whether or not it happened at that point in time, I don't know, but that definitely sort of like, you know, thrust me into basically doing drawing and painting. And, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, the whole aspect of like, you know, working through, you know, whether it's an emotional process or an intellectual process, but just basically sort of like, you know, falling down like, you know, you know that rabbit hole of, of creativity. Well, you know, this is something I sort of struggle with because I, when in high school, I definitely painted a lot more. And, um, and that is like, you know, when you paint and you draw and you sculpt, that's basically like, you know, kind of the classic definition of art. Um, I did paint my first year in college. I took a painting class and had a bad experience with the instructor. And all I know is that when I walked by the ceramic studio, there was that musty smell of, you know, it was earthy, it was clay drying, there was a lot of activity that was taking place in there, and so that's when I just started, you know, decided to start making pots, or at least taking those classes, and once I did that, you know, I didn't turn back. Um, this clay, as far as, like, you know, making production pottery, it's more classified as kind of like a craft, you know, and, uh, 
And I hate, that, and that's really can be kind of a cheesy term for it, but you know, there's a, like a certain degree of discipline that goes into it, and there's certainly creativity that happens with it. Um, so the whole aspect of defining myself, my artist or a craftsperson, you know, I let other people decide that. Um, but, uh, you know, so anyway, as far as classic, classifying myself as an artist, I guess I really sort of stay away from those definitions because then you all of a sudden get put into a box. Um, well, it would have been like, you know, in, in, in uh, college with St. John's University, and so I was an art major there, so I did everything from sculpting, lithography, painting, uh, printmaking, um, you know, certainly ceramics, that was the main focus, you know, and art history as well, you know, so I just got your well-rounded liberal arts education while I was there. And then while I was there, uh, you know, a magical thing happened, and that was that uh, there was a nun uh, who was teaching art history at the time and writing a book on a style of pottery called karatsu ware. And her name was Sister Johanna Becker. Um, she, in that first class, I clearly remember, she gave us a shard of pottery. And we passed it around the room and felt it. And at the end of the class, she said, this piece of pottery is nearly 12,000 years old and it came from the Jomon you know, period in Japan. And that's what really kind of blew me away as far as just artifact that it's like you know somebody made it and it was almost like having a conversation with a potter that you know made this thing 12,000 years ago and so that really you know got me going down the path of play another was a workshop with Warren McKenzie who taught the University of Minnesota and uh, he espoused production or I should say functional pottery and uh, so that really kind of gelled at that point in time but then it ended up that Johanna suggested I was going to France, that I work or at least approach a potter that she had known that was in Japan, um, and uh, a Danish potter in this little pottery village in central France called Le Morne. And so um, I study abroad, I took a semester off uh, and uh, went to Le Morne and uh, worked there for probably about say four or five months. And this is a little village that has about 50 potters and they all fire with wood. And so that's where the whole wood firing thing really gelled for me. Um, so I came back, finished college, and then went back to Le Bourne, you know, for another year and a half. And, uh, you know, fired a lot of wood burning kilns there. Well, you know, and uh, it's a good question because it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, it's the results that come out of the kiln. Um, so let's back up a little bit. You take this lump of clay, you, know, you make the clay, you know, essentially get the raw material, you make clay, you put it on a wheel, and then from there you shape it. And you, you know, you're so intimately involved with the process, okay? For me anyway, uh, taking that pot after it's been glazed and putting it into a gas or electric kiln, in which you just basically have to turn a knob or hit a switch and then walk away from the process didn't make any sense to me at all. You have to be there constantly tending the kiln. It's a baby. You have to be there nurturing it, feeding it, all right? And then that entire process of going from ambient temperature up to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit, where the kiln really becomes a living creature. You know, that's what really responded to me. And whether or not it's that whole aspect of growing up on a farm because we heat it with wood, you know, there was something that was really kind of visceral and uh, about the entire process that really spoke to me anyway. And then the other thing is that every pot's different depending on the type of wood that you're burning, the type of kiln, the duration of the firing, the type of clay. Every firing is going to be a little different. You know, even if you have like, you know, basically sort of keep really tight parameters of, you know, the conditions, the clay, the glazes, every firing is going to be different because with a large kiln, we take six hour shifts. So I'm not there all the time. Somebody else has to tend the fire for six hours. And so things can happen during that particular period of time that I have no control over. So the exciting thing for me, and it can be, you know, it can either be incredibly exciting or it can be devastating, is that you're not really quite sure what the results are going to be after you know, pack the kiln. It can be Christmas morning or Halloween night, you know. So, you know, that's what I really appreciated about it as well. It's just that whole human dynamic that goes into it. Oh, I think that now, like, no doubt whatsoever, as soon as I, you know, like, you know, really got into making pots, and especially going to Le Bourne, you know, that really sealed the deal for me, you know, and uh, 
I just knew that I needed more experience because the problem with clay is that there's so many different facets, you know, uh, from making the clay body, all right, to your glazes, to making the pots, and uh, having like, you know, basically sort of like, you know, being very careful and caring of each particular step, being aware of what you're doing, because it can just take, you know, one lapse of consciousness, you know, like, a focus where you can sort of mess up a glaze and uh, and then from there you can impact the kiln you can have like a, a lot of work that is completely useless right yeah I, I do it, and it comes from you know basically traditional pottery you know um, you know as I said as far as like you know an art form you know I don't necessarily sit at the wheel and it's like what am I gonna make now <laughs> you know I'll make mugs and, uh, and there's certain shapes. My inspiration is function and, uh, and basically sort of providing a product that when people pick up a mug, the handle's comfortable, the lip's comfortable, the glaze is beautiful, uh, the aesthetics, the complete aesthetics of the pot, it had a really nice firing, you know, all of that, that's really where I'm, you know, like, you know, where I'm going with it. Um, but no, as far as like, you know, I think sculpting is a completely different thing as opposed to making like, for example, functional pots. Uh, but a lot of my inspiration comes from uh, European, uh, Japanese, Korean traditions, you know, but again, tradition, you know, so there's that foundation which everything sort of springs from. Um, I found that over the years, and I've been doing this for 32 years, it's interesting seeing pots that I made back in 1990, as opposed to pots I make now. Um, and there's this like, you know, gradual, you know, change that takes place. It's, uh, it's nothing dramatic about it, but it's almost kind of like a tree that's growing where the limb, you know, sort of goes out that direction or that direction, you know, looking for more light. Um, so, you know, as far as the work that I'm making now, and then obviously as I get older, you know, I think that my work will definitely change just due to the fact that I'll probably be working with smaller amounts of clay, softer clay, right? And, uh, you know, just because my wrists, my fingers are probably not going to, so that would be really interesting to sort of see where, you know, that all goes. But, uh, but no, you know, getting into like, you know, I don't know, just the whole aspect of, uh, you know, and, it's, and things sort of happen, you know, there's accidents that occur as well, you know, and, uh, and then from there you can sort of like follow that flow, you know, whether or not it's like altering the shape of a pot, pinching it, uh, yeah, that's where, you know, like his space is sort of to sort of keep your mind open, and be receptive to, you know, whatever conditions or at least, you know, you know, accidents might occur along the way. Because the fact is that, you know, I'll get customers coming back after like, you know, 20 years, right? And they, you know, whether it's a coffee mug or, you know, uh, you know, just that they, they and it broke, uh, but they become so attached to it and they want to replace it. They can't have the same mug, but they want something similar. You know, for me, that is like, you know, what really kind of inspires me is that you know, I've made it, you know, hundreds of thousands of pots that are now, you know, hopefully in the kitchens or being used by people. Um, you know, that, that, that connection that takes place between maker and user, you know, that's what really kind of like inspires me more than anything else. As opposed to just, you know, my gratification for making something that I want to make, you know, I want to make it for other individuals. And so, you know, working with that, you know, that, I guess the, you know, that boundary or the parameters of function that really sort of like, you know, uh, that's what, you know, and also it could be too that, you know, I grew up on a farm in central Minnesota where, you know, everything, you have to be really practical in what you're doing, you know, um, you know, everything has a purpose, you have tools, they're there for a purpose. Um, so whether or not that's something that really sort of like, you know, again, you know, working with clay, with the earth, um, and also stuff that functions and has a place in your home. You know, uh, you know all I can say is I've never really sort of like analyzed myself um, as to why I'm doing this, but I suspect that might be, you know, have, have something to do with it anyway. Yeah, and you know, um, yeah, and especially like, you know, just sort of seeing pots that, you know, are 
hundreds if not thousands of years old and uh, you know the just the, the craftsmanship that went into it um, you know especially under the conditions in which they worked you know that's what really you know uh, you know, just really, yeah, I, I'm inspired by that, you know. And who knows, you know, kind of these pots are going to be around for quite some time, but, you know, hopefully, you know, 100, 200, 1,000 years down the road, somebody else will come upon this thing. It's like, man, that's a nice mug, <laughs> you know. And so when I was up uh, in Holding Ford about three, maybe four weeks ago, um, that's when we decided to swing by, and uh, yeah, it's like, you know, all of a sudden, it's a mecca, you know, it's just a, it's an amazing facility, and, um, and you know, of all places, you know, I wouldn't say like all places, because it can happen anywhere, it really can, um, but as far as uh, Craig's vision, and, um, and seeing it come, you know, to completion, and walking in that space, it's absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Um, you know, I would think that uh, you know it's the envy I think of any small town. You know, because what is really I think that you know, and, you know, he probably understands that that you know, art as far as an economic driver in the community is sustainable. Right? Uh, people are always going to create, and people are always going to be appreciate and hopefully like support artists as well. Um, so, um, you know, to have that in holding for it, along with a bike trail, you know, I just sort of see it, you know, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, a, a massively huge asset, you know, that has come to the community. As I said, I was completely floored, you know, when I went into that space. Um, well, my website is cambridgepottery.com, um, on Facebook, Mark's Good Lark. And then I also have a business, and that would be Cambridge uh, Woodfire Pottery, I believe, on Facebook. Um, and uh, all my contact information is there, so you can friend me, uh, get a hold of me through Messenger. Uh, uh, let's see, I do have a store or a shop on my website. I'm going to be loading it up in the next couple of days. Um, so there should be plenty of work uh, that you can purchase online. Um, if you're passing through, um, you know, southeastern Wisconsin, I'm about 20 minutes out of Madison. I really try to encourage the people to come here and buy my work, because uh, then they can really get a good sense as to where everything's being created. And I think that really is kind of important that people sort of see the kiln, see the operation. And then it's just like, you know, having a bit, you know, closer contact with me as well. Uh, but yeah, those are the, the three avenues. Well, um, don't get discouraged. Um, don't get, you know, especially that I think that there's a lot of fear uh, that goes into, you know, the decision of, okay, I'm going to be an artist. And, um, and rightly so, I, I do remember when I came back from France and I was going to take up my apprenticeship in Connecticut where I wasn't going to be making any money. Uh, but I had a job offer at a production pottery in Cambridge. And this is the early 80s uh, and good money. Uh, but I decided to go to Connecticut, and my father, I think, was not appalled, but I think that he was very concerned of my decision. Um, so I think that if you decide that you want to be an artist, um, understand that, you know, financially, it's going to be tough, right? Um, so however you sort of work around that until you actually sort of establish yourself, um, persevere. You need to have grit. You just need to keep working at it. Um, and, uh, and there's going to be a tremendous amount of frustration in the process as well, but you need to take that frustration and turn it into a learning tool uh, so this way you can basically advance your artwork. Um, and, uh, and then from there, um, you know, just don't forget that, uh, I don't know, that fascination and love that you had with the process when you first started, you know? And, uh, and then I think that once you start going down that thing, every day. Show up in the shop every day. Um, you know, just do something. Do some drawing, do sculpting, just make sure that you're basically doing art every day. And, uh, you know, so this way things remain fresh. Um, yeah, and then hopefully at the uh, end of that long journey, uh, you uh, are successful. <laughs>